This is Emil Pokarklis, the founder of iPhone Photography School, and in this video you're going to discover 10 essential photo editing techniques for creating incredible iPhone photos that everyone adores. I know these 10 techniques work really, really well because these are the same techniques that I use for editing my best iPhone photos with over 2,000 likes on Instagram. But before we jump into these techniques, I want to briefly talk about why you should be editing your iPhone photos in the first place. You know, I have a saying that no editing can turn a bad photo into a good one, but that still doesn't mean you shouldn't be editing your photos. If you take a decent photo, you can often make it even 10 times better through photo editing. And that's because the difference between a good photo and a great one is often not in how the photo was taken, but in the editing that was done afterwards. Now, you probably already know how to apply filters to your iPhone photos, but let me tell you a little secret. The best iPhone photographers never just apply filters to their photos, hoping that they'll somehow turn a decent photo into a great one. Sure, they sometimes use filters as a part of their editing, but that's definitely not where their editing stops. They use editing techniques that are far more powerful than just applying filters, and it's often because of these techniques that their photos stand out so much. So if you want to discover 10 techniques that the pros are using to create incredible iPhone photos that everyone adores, all you have to do is watch this video. Do we have a deal? Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first technique I want to tell you about is cleaning up your photos with cropping and rotation. And this might sound like a basic technique or something that you already do a lot, uh, but I have to tell you two things. First, uh, we're going to get into more advanced and more complicated techniques uh, towards the end of the video, but also this is such a core part of editing that I wanted to make sure that we don't leave this out and that you get to really understand why it's so important to clean up your photos with cropping and rotation. So the image you're looking at now is a photo I shot at Yellowstone National Park last winter and what you'll notice here is that uh, the horizon is not straight, uh, so it's slanted as we move from left to right. And also you will notice that uh, the image doesn't have a clear point of focus or focal point. But here, uh, in this version of the image, uh, I have fixed both of these problems and you'll see that the horizon is now straight. And since I've cropped the image, uh, the composition is a lot more clear now and we have a nice focal point towards the right hand side of the image. And if you look at these two photos side by side, you can clearly see what kind of improvement I've been able to make by cleaning up the composition through cropping and rotation. Now I've also done some color correction here and we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make here is that it's really important that you crop your photos and straighten them before you do any other editing. And these techniques actually work really, really well. So what you're looking at now is a screenshot of my Instagram account. And as you can see, this photo got more than 2000 likes on Instagram. And that is largely the case because of the cropping and rotation that I've done here. So now let me show you one more quick example. Uh, this is a photo from my student Rosa who actually finished my iPhone editing academy course. And uh, in this photo you can see that Rosa has taken a photo of a flower, uh, but the composition isn't really uh, so nice and there's a distracting background. But by cropping this photo, Rosa was able to clean up the composition and to create a much more compelling uh, image uh, that really looks a lot more beautiful. And if we look at these two side by side, you can see what a big difference Rosa has been able to make by cropping the image correctly to create a beautiful composition. Now, if you want to crop your photos, uh, you have a lot of options. Practically any app allows you to crop and straighten images. Uh, but the two that come to mind are the Photos app of your iPhone, which is actually built in, as well as Snapseed app, which is a very good overall photo editing app that's free. Now, the second technique I want to cover is removing unwanted objects from your photos. And this is also related to cleaning up your photos, except uh, this time you can actually learn how to remove things that don't belong in the image. So let me show you some examples. So this is a photo I took of a child on the beach and I really liked the foggy weather and the fact that it pretty much looks like uh, the child is standing on the edge of the world. The only thing that I didn't quite like was that there are all these uh, seaweeds, uh, both in the background as well as in the foreground at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so what I did was I cropped this photo and I also removed all the seaweed. So now that you look at this image, it is absolutely clear and there's absolutely nothing competing for our attention. And if you look at these two images side by side, you'll see that on the left hand side, 
uh, we have all these seaweeds in the foreground as well as in the background, but on the right hand side, all of that is gone. And because of that, all the attention goes to the child and the beautiful composition, and there's nothing distracting in the frame. Now here's another example from one of my students, Jeremy, who also did the iPhone Editing Academy. And here in this photo, uh, this is the original that Jeremy started with. And here is the edited photo that Jeremy was able to create by cropping the image and also removing distracting elements. Now, if we look at these two side by side, you will see that on the left-hand side of the barn, uh, there are some electricity poles uh, that kind of compete for attention but if you look at the image on the right, you'll see that these poles are gone and Jeremy has been able to completely remove them while also enhancing uh, the composition and the colors of this photo. Now, how do you do this type of edits? Well, it's actually relatively simple, but you need an app called Touch Retouch. And with Touch Retouch, you can remove pretty much any unwanted objects from your photos, just like you saw in the previous examples. Now, the third technique I want to share with you is adjusting perspective to create perfect geometry in your photos. So this is very important in photos of architecture, and especially if you're taking a photo where there are tall subjects that are significantly taller than you are. For example, this photo uh, comes from the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin, and it's a very, very beautiful photo. I happen to like it a lot. Uh, but the one thing I don't really like is how the lines are converging towards the top. So essentially, none of the vertical lines uh, are actually vertical in the frame. Fortunately, this is an easy thing to fix with perspective correction. So if you look at this version of the photo, you will see that now all the vertical lines are perfectly vertical. And this creates a really nice, really beautiful geometry that just looks so much better in photos. And if we look at the two side by side, you'll see that on the left, uh, we have these slanted lines that are converging towards the top. And on the right, all the lines are perfectly vertical, which looks so much nicer in terms of composition and geometry. Now, let me show you one more quick example. And here, my student Evelyn has done something very similar. So this is a photo that she took of some tall buildings. Now, when you take photos of high buildings like this, you are going to run into perspective issues, as you can see here. But the good thing is that you can fix these issues quite easily. And here you can see that Evelyn has been able to uh, correct the perspective problems and isolate a small part of the image uh, to create a beautiful composition that has very strong geometry. And if we look at these two images side by side, you can really see what kind of difference Evelyn has been able to create uh, by correcting the perspective in this image. So uh, the two apps that I recommend for this are Snapseed, which has a perspective correction tool. And the other app that's really good for this is called Screwit, or at least I hope I pronounced it correctly. Uh, and in Screwit, you'll generally get more control but you can also do this in Snapseed, which has a pretty good perspective correction tool built in as well. Now, the fourth technique I want to share with you is enhancing the colors of your photos. And this is really, really important, and this is something I do a lot. Now, if you look at this photo that was taken by my student Carl, who also completed iPhone Editing Academy, you'll see that there's a lot of potential in this photo, but the colors are kind of uh, dull, and the image doesn't really stand out as much as it could. But Carl could easily fix this by improving the colors so that the image really stands out more. And now, the best parts of this image, which are the colorful leaves that are covering uh, the face of the child, uh, stand out so much more. And in general, this photo just makes so much stronger visual impact. And now that we look at the two photos side by side, you can really see what kind of improvement the editing has created in this photo. So here's another example. Uh, this is a photo that I actually took and if in the previous photo we made the colors more intense, uh, you can actually also go in the opposite direction. You don't always have to increase the saturation of your photos. So here, uh, in this particular image, I decided to go for a more subtle look so that the colors are actually less bright and less natural. So what I ended up doing was uh, cropping this image, uh, correcting some perspective issues, and applying a filter that created this beautiful mood and now this photo looks a lot more pleasing visually, and I like the interesting mood I've been able to create by doing color correction. So for some photos, you might want to make the colors more intense. For others, you might want to actually make them less intense. And in some other cases, you might just want to change the colors a little bit. And you can do all of this easily through photo editing. There are three apps I recommend for this type of editing. The first one is once again Snapseed, uh, which gives you a lot of control over how you adjust the colors in your photos. 
Uh, if you want to apply filters and go for some uh, more subtle and perhaps more moody looks, uh, Visco is a great app for that kind of editing. And Afterlight is another app that I like to use for correcting and improving the colors in my photos. But now let's move on to the next technique and that's converting your photos to black and white. So there are a lot of reasons why you might want to convert your photos to black and white and I won't go into all of them now, but as you probably know, there are times when you can create a more beautiful, more artistic photo by converting it to black and white and by removing the distraction of color, you can actually emphasize the important parts of the photo, such as the subject matter, uh, the light, the contrast and the sh important shapes that are seen in the photo. For example, here you'll see that my student Rosa has taken this photo, which is quite nice, but in street photography, people often use black and white and they do it for a very good reason. And that's also what Rosa did here. And now if you look at the edited version of the same photo, uh, you will see that the edited version uh, essentially removes the distractions of color. Uh, it also emphasizes differences in light better. And uh, because of all of this, um, the attention of the viewers are, is actually directed more towards the subject which is what works out great for this type of photography. And if we look at the two images side by side, you'll see that on the left we have the original and on the right we have the black and white version of the same photo. And I think we can all agree that the black and white looks a lot more interesting and more artistic, which is a good thing here. Now here's another example, and this is a photo that I took myself at an Apple store in San Francisco. And I happen to like this photo a lot, but I don't really like the colors in this image. I just don't think the colors enhance this particular photo in any way. So what do you do when the colors aren't needed? Well, it's simple, you can get rid of them. And that's exactly what I did in this photo. And the interesting thing about this particular image is that it's actually, technically speaking, not a black and white photo because I've applied a yellowish tint to the highlights only. And so the highlights or the brightest parts of the image are actually a tiny bit yellow. And that's a more advanced black and white editing technique that you can sometimes use to add a particular mood to your photos. But now if we look at the two photos side by side, you can clearly see that converting the image to black and white was the right choice. And you'll also see that I've improved the composition significantly uh, by cropping out everything that's unnecessary here. My two favorite apps for black and white conversions are Snapseed and Visco. But just like with color correction, there are dozens of apps that you can use for this particular purpose. So you can use whichever app you like best for black and white photography. Now the next technique I want to cover is applying edits to only some parts of your photos. And this is where we start to get more advanced. And the thing is that you can only uncover the true potential of photo editing when you start applying edits to only some parts of the photos. So let me show you some examples. Now this is a beautiful landscape photo that I took in winter. And for this particular photo, it's also the sunset time. And I decided that it would be really nice uh, to make the sky a little bit more vibrant and intensify the colors a little bit. So that's exactly what I did. But watch closely as I switch to the following photo and you'll see that the sky becomes a lot more colorful, but I have not changed the tones of the snow. So now I'm switching to the next photo and you can see that the sky is so much more vibrant now. It looks so much nicer, so much more beautiful. And the sunset just feels so much warmer here. But at the same time, I didn't want to have uh, yellow snow or snow that's even more yellow than it already is. And because of that, I applied these effects separately to the sky and to the foreground. And if we look at the two images side by side, you can clearly see that the foreground in both cases is pretty much identical but I have greatly enhanced the colors of the sky in the background. And I've been able to do this by using the masking functionality in Snapseed. And this allows me to essentially apply my edits only to the sky while leaving the foreground untouched. So the snow looks natural and the sky looks beautiful and vibrant. Now, here's another example. And this is by one of my iPhone Editing Academy uh, students. And here you'll see the original photo where we have this beautiful leaf with some uh, drops of water on top of it. Uh, and what Iona has done here is converted this image to black and white while also intensifying the colors of the big leaf in the middle of the screen. And this is an interesting technique that you can do if you want to isolate some colors in your photos so that the subject of your photo stands out more while also converting the rest to black and white so that it essentially doesn't compete for attention with your main subject. 
So this is a really interesting effect. You can see it works really nice for this photo. And this is another example of how you can apply your edits selectively to only some parts of your photos. So in order to do this kind of effects, uh, you need apps that either support some kind of selective adjustments or that support masking. And my two favorite apps for this are Snapseed and Enlight. In Snapseed, I particularly like the selective adjust tool, which allows you to isolate just one color. And of course, the masking tool, which allows you to apply any of the effects that you do inside Snapseed to only some parts of your photos. And you also have the masking capability built into Enlight, and it works in the same way. But now let's move on to the next technique and that's removing distracting backgrounds from your photos. So as I've already mentioned a few times in this video, in general, you want to simplify the parts of your photos that can be simplified. And when it comes to backgrounds, it often means that you may want to either remove them completely or perhaps blur them out a little bit. So what you're looking at now is a photo that one of my iPhone Editing Academy students sent in. And here Nancy has taken a photo of these beautiful flowers, but as it often happens with flowers, they're growing out of a pot. And the pot that you can see at the bottom of the screen, as well as everything in the background, is honestly just a distraction. And it definitely takes away from the beauty of these photos. But the good thing is that you can completely eliminate these distractions by blurring out the background, as Nancy has done in this case. So if you look at the two images side by side, you'll see that on the left, the entire background is sharp. And on the right, everything in the background is blurred out. And this is a great technique for photos of flowers, as well as for photos of people, such as portrait photos, where you want all the attention to go towards the face of your subject, but not on the background, which might often be distracting or unnecessary. And this is another thing you can do through photo editing. So here's another example, and this is also a photo of flowers. This is by Wendy, who completed iPhone Editing Academy. And what Wendy has done here is essentially remove the background altogether. So she has just isolated the subjects and she has positioned the subjects against the black background. And if we look at the two images side by side, you can see what a dramatic difference this has made. And this is actually a very interesting technique because it allows you to completely isolate the beautiful parts of the image while pretty much getting rid of everything else. And this is another example of how you can remove distracting backgrounds from your photos. So how do you do this? Well, there are a few different techniques you can use. If you simply want to blur out the background of your photos, uh, the app I would recommend using is Tada HD. But if you want to do something more advanced, such as remove the background altogether, which is what Wendy did, then you would need to use an app called Superimpose. And now let's move on to technique number eight, and that's creating mood in your photos with textures. So let me show you what that looks like. So this photo here, which was sent in by my student Jeremy, uh, isn't that interesting. I would even go on to say that it's a boring photo, but there's a lot of potential in this if you know how to edit it correctly. And that's exactly what Jeremy did. And you'll see that Jeremy has cropped the image and applied these beautiful textures to create uh, this artistic moody look, which works really great for this photo. So if we look at the two versions side by side, you can see what kind of difference Jeremy has been able to create with some relatively simple edits. And this is what happens when you apply interesting textures to your iPhone photos. So here's another example. Uh, this is by Donna, who has completed iPhone Editing Academy. And Donna uh, has taken this photo of this old building, which looks like an abandoned building. And, you know, the building looks old, but Donna essentially decided to also apply the same kind of old look and feel to the edit of the photo. And by doing that, uh, you can see that now these textures and the editing that has been done complement the contents of the image. So not only the contents of the image uh, suggest an old building, but also the editing and the look of the photo itself uh, is old. And this is how you can create a coherent image where both the contents and the feel of the image go together perfectly. And I think Donna has done it really well in this photo. And you can see what kind of difference she's been able to create by simply applying some vintage textures to this image. So the best apps for this are Distressed Effects, and mixtures. Uh, you do get more control with mixtures, but the stressed effects has some slightly more interesting textures for you to play around with. Now, one tip I have for you is to don't use any of these techniques in isolation. Uh, if you just apply a texture using mixtures or distressed effects, you want to make sure you also do color correction in an app like Snapseed, and you also want to make sure that you crop the images correctly and remove any unwanted objects. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the more you can combine all these techniques together, 
the better results you will be able to create. But now let's move on to the next technique and that's using layers to combine different photos. And this is where we really start to get advanced. And honestly, there's really no limit to how much you can do to your photos once you learn how to do layering well. So the photo you're looking at now is also by one of my iPhone Editing Academy graduates. And uh, in this photo, you'll see that we just have an empty street. So there's nothing there. But what's really interesting is how Arturo edited this photo. So what you're looking at now is the edited version of the same photo. And you'll see that Arturo has added subjects into the image that weren't there before. And he's even added some interesting shadows there. And this is an example of the kind of things you can do once you learn to layer your photos on top of each other. So once you learn this, there is really no limit to your creativity and you can do pretty much anything right on your iPhone. So let me show you one more example just to show you what kind of possibilities there are in layering. So uh, this photo you're looking at now is by one of my iPhone Editing Academy graduates uh, and she has pretty much just taken a photo of her hand and these store displays. But here's what this photo looks like after she's done the editing. So if we look at the two images side by side, you'll see that there aren't that many similarities, uh, but Philippa has been able to use the source photo on the left uh, and combine it together with some other photos. As for example, you can see some notes in the background as well as some uh, beautiful tones and water droplets. And she's been able to combine all of this together into this one beautiful artistic composition and the reason I'm showing you this is to really demonstrate that once you learn how to layer your photos on top of each other, there's really no limit to what you can do in iPhone photo editing. So the best app for this kind of editing is Superimpose. And once you really learn how to use this app, the sky is the limit in terms of what you can do. But now let me move on to technique number 10, which is actually a combination of different uh, creative image manipulation techniques. There are too many for me to isolate all of them, but instead, I'm just going to show you what are some of the editing possibilities that you might not be aware of. So here's the original unedited photo that I took with my iPhone. And recently, I decided to send this photo to people who have completed my iPhone Editing Academy course. And I asked them for what kind of edits they could come up with here. And now let me just show you some of the edits that my students created. So watch closely as I'm switching to the first edit. And here you'll notice that uh, the buildings have been straightened out. Uh, the colors have been made a lot more beautiful and a lot more uh, vibrant. And most interestingly, the water in the foreground has been completely smoothed out so that the reflection is a lot stronger and a lot more beautiful. And that's just one of the things that my students did. So let me show you some more examples. It turns out that if you want to, you can add a sun to your photos and that can be a great addition to sunset photos like this or one of my students actually added a beautiful uh, texture and some birds to the top part of the photo. And this also works out really, really nicely. And you can see how different the mood and the feel of this photo is once this editing has been done. So here's another example, and this is where it gets really crazy. Obviously, the, a moon of this size is not completely natural, but this is a great example of the kind of things you can do once you really learn uh, how to do editing well. You can even turn your daytime photos into night, as you can see was done in this particular photo, or you can even add an entirely different foreground to completely change the look and feel of the photo. And these are just some examples of the kind of creative editing techniques you can use to enhance the, your iPhone photos. So some of the apps that were used for these particular edits are Reflect, which is a great app for creating reflections, even if there are no reflections in the original photo. Uh, another app that was used here is Lenslight, which is great for adding different beautiful light effects, such as the sun that you could see in one of the photos. Superimpose is once again the app you use for layering together elements of different photos. And if you want to go really crazy and add planets to your photos, that's when you'd want to use an app called Alien Sky. So as you can see, the techniques I shared with you are extremely powerful. And when you start using them, they will dramatically improve your iPhone photos just like they did for my past students who were featured in this video. And while I showed you all the techniques and even the exact apps I use for these techniques, you probably wouldn't know how to create such edits yourself. And that's totally okay. It actually took me about three years of research and hard work to learn all the techniques and the apps that we covered today. So if you have a lot of time and if you're really good with technology, you can probably figure it out yourself. 
but I wanted to create an easier solution for people who want to improve their iPhone photos right now rather than in three years. And that's why I created iPhone Editing Academy, which is the only online course that shows you how to make your photos even 10 times better through careful photo editing without spending hours on your photos and without ruining the quality of your photos and editing. This course covers all the techniques and all the editing apps that we talked about today. So when you sign up, you will know how to create all the edits that you saw in this video. Now, I have to warn you that iPhone Editing Academy always sells out quickly and the registration will only stay open for a few more days. So if you want to find out more about this course, you should do it right now while the registration is still open. So click on that big yellow funny looking button below this video and it will take you to the next page where you can learn more about iPhone Editing Academy and see if this course is a good fit for you before the registration closes in just a few days. So click on that yellow button below and I'll see you on the next page.